This is the Milo Beasley Show. This is the Milo Beasley Show. There's only one thing you need to know. This is the Milo Beasley Show. And now, here's your host, Milo Beasley. And welcome to the Milo Beasley Show. Do, 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 do. Episode number 352. Uh, still way up there. Uh, our, our next guest, uh, they say the third time's the charm, and uh, it, I think it is here. Uh, we were finally able to connect, so please help me welcome it this time. Uh, you may have seen her on, uh, on season 20 of Hell's Kitchen uh, and coming out with a new show uh, called Peeled. Please help me welcome it this time, Josie Clemens. How are you? Hi. Hey, I am so good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm stoked to have you. Uh, stoked to uh, to talk about Peel. Talk about uh, a little bit of uh, of Hell's Kitchen. Um, and you know, just uh, you know, uh, your your life and and what's got you to uh, this point and what's you know, I, I think Peel's going to be a, a a big big hit. Um, so. Uh, I believe it starts, uh, it debuts uh, September 24th, right? Yeah, that's correct. September 24th. And uh, for folks in the LA area, you could actually purchase tickets to the uh, red carpet premiere and, and hang out, right? Yeah, yeah. If anybody wants to come, I would love to meet and connect in person. I'm really big on building up the vegan community or anybody who's vegan curious. So it'll be a red carpet premiere September 24th. VIP tickets are available on peeledshow.com. A little shameless plug. And I'd love to see you there because we're going to have champagne and appetizers that are prepared by the chefs who actually competed on the show. And you'll get to see me get tipsy off of two sips of champagne because I don't really drink and it'll be a good time. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. So peeled, uh, as we pull up, uh, is the first vegan culinary competition show. Uh, I, I think that's, I think that's awesome. Uh, and how did, how did that even come about? Well, um, star Simmons, who is the creator and the visionary of the show, she is the one who actually approached me with the concept and the idea. They already had the show in works and they is Be Kind Productions, um, who actually, they have an app as well. It's called the Be Kind app and you can download it and uh, find all things vegan near you. Uh, really cool app, really helpful for anybody who is curious about the vegan world or vegan food. And uh, she hit me up and she was like, hey, we have some questions about this show that we're making. Do you think that you could answer a few questions? I was like, yeah, of course. And then it just developed into being the co-creator and um, helping out with the concept and uh, the logistics of everything. And it was just a super fun collaboration with a bunch of passionate vegans. So, yeah. That, that's that's uh, fantastic. Now, how long have you been vegan and what made you uh, make that change or have you always been vegan? Well, no, that's a good question. I've been vegan for seven years. I grew up in Michigan eating like meat three times a day, lunch meat, steak, chicken. Like that was just like, you know, normal food uh, right. that you snack on and eat for every meal every day. So it was, uh, it took a lot of change and a lot of uh, me hitting like a lot of bumps in life for me to reflect on how I got to where I was. Cause I've always been super ambitious, like really been into like the personal development game since I was like 14 and used to read like a lot of business books and personal development books and was super ambitious. And uh, that created like this edge that I think a lot of people are trying to create in corporate America or just like to chase their dreams. But I don't think we stopped to realize like the actual repercussions of that edge and how that affects people and ourselves and the environment. And I was forced to reckon with all the decisions that I made when I lost my job, my boyfriend and all the money in my bank account, which was like a substantial amount at a young age. 
um, yeah, I just had to re reflect and like reevaluate what am I doing? <laughs> so that's what caused me to go vegan. Uh, that's uh, I mean, that's v very interesting. You know, a lot of people, uh, you know, do it for the uh, love of animals or for diet. Uh, but it's, it's always interesting to hear uh, everyone's story about how, uh, you know, they made that lifestyle change. And it is a very, very difficult lifestyle change. Uh, now, um, Peeled was, so you already filmed it, right? And was that done in Vegas? It was done in Vegas. And actually last week, uh, I had to get back to LA because we filmed a few other segments that are going to be cut into the three episodes that we created in Vegas. So now all of the content is captured and we are in the editing process and we will have it ready. Um, by the premiere. So it's super exciting. That that's fantastic. Uh, and, um, I'm, I'm super excited to watch. So, uh, there's what four contestants. So there, there's three, there's three shows and where can folks find peeled on, uh, on their televisions and, and smart TVs? Yeah. So Unchained TV is where peeled will be and you can get that on Roku, Apple, Apple TV and Amazon Fire. So those are the streaming platforms where it will be available. That's fantastic. You can pretty much watch it anywhere uh, on the go, um, at home, on a plane. You can pretty much watch it anywhere then. Anywhere. There's no excuses. So everyone better watch it. <laughs> now, have you made that threat to your friends that, hey, there is no excuses. You have to watch this. Oh, absolutely. Of course. I can't just like threaten random strangers and not my friends and family. That's not fair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is, this is true. Um, and I read something like <laughs> very, very cool. And uh, I don't know if it's um, that uh, widespread or has been done before, but the winning chef will have their um, monetary prize donated to the nonprofit of their choosing. It's true. And every chef chose um, a charity or a nonprofit that is something that is really near and dear to their heart. Uh, something where like either something has transpired in their life that caused them to choose this charity. So that really comes through when you're watching these chefs cook. Like this is like the biggest adrenaline rush of their career. Uh, undoubtedly, and they're under the scrutiny of four very tough uh, judges, including myself. <laughs> so, like watching some of the footage as we're editing, it, it's pretty, it's hilarious, but it's also really intense. So it's a nice, it's a nice mixture. When you're when you're watching, not as a competitor, but as a host or a judge, and you're watching somebody do something put an ingredient in or do you just want to like how hard is it to not be like no 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 let let me do it well um there's two sides to me and i'd say that uh one side of me is like wanting their the chef's like creative aspect to like be fully explored and developed and seen through. But the other side of me is like, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so yeah, it's like an internal battle, like as I'm witnessing all of this. And, um, but it's, it's great. I mean, I think it's good to have both, both the discipline and the, uh, the nurturing aspect. Um, it was, it was a challenging position for me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any, um, any, I guess, bloopers, funny moments that we aren't going to see on, on TV that, that you hope that someday they are able to come out like, uh, on, you know, behind the scenes on YouTube or social media? Oh, it'll definitely come out one day. Uh, not necessarily on the premiere day. I mean, maybe we'll, we'll see if we put it together, but there will definitely be some hilarious outtakes, undoubtedly. Uh, that, that's fantastic. As we talk about charities, what would have been, let's say you were a contestant and you won, uh, what would have been your charity of choice? 
Oh, that's a good question. I used to, um, I don't know if you know on Facebook, like for your birthday, you can have everybody donate oh, to right. the charity of your choice. Um, and I think I used to choose some sort of like ocean uh, conservancy group, like people who go and clean up the beach. That's something that I'm really passionate about just because uh, like, I think that the best way to save ocean life is to like stop eating them. But also I think that the ocean has just been treated as like a place to put all of our stuff when we don't know where else to put it. So, and that affects like many ecosystem ways. Like, I mean, just the way that wildlife is like strangled with our trash or just walking right. along the beach, you see how much plastic there is. But, uh, yeah, that's something that I really care about, especially having lived in uh, like just outside of Venice Beach most of my adult life. It's, uh, yeah, that's something that I care about. Oh, wow. I, uh, yeah. So, uh, you, does you're, you're able to get to the beach often then, or is it overrated because you're, so um, close? not anymore. Well, not anymore, but I used to all the time. I used to be like riding my bike, uh, up and down, like, uh, the Venice boardwalk every single day catching first light surf at 5 30 in the morning yeah that used to be that used to be my jam and it will be one day when i don't have to pay rent and soon <laughs> yeah i guess you can't uh i mean i guess you can pay rent you know uh uh surfing and and being on the beach uh some people do it right Yes, exactly. Do you pay your three thousand dollar a month rent when all you do is get tan and surf? But right. somehow it's happening. We need to come up with a passive income strategy, Milo. <laughs> Make it happen. I mean, well, if you opened up a a vegan breakfast place right on the beach, and that way you get to hit the hit the surf, and then come in and serve everybody. Oh. Oh, that would be so sick. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that there are definitely some vegan um, franchises in the works. So hopefully I'll have some in Venice Beach soon, but definitely in my hometown in Detroit and have them spread like wildfire because there's just so much opportunity in the vegan sphere. So there will be lots of opportunity for surfing later, but right now it's time to work really hard and provide as much value to society as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, what about we, you? Are you a surfer? You were or a skater, or do what? Oh, I said, are you a surfer or a skater? How about you? Uh, no, um, I don't have the uh, coordination for any of that. Uh, I used to <laughs> when I, I used to when I was when I was really young. Used to think I was going to be a cool skateboarder kid, uh, and then I um, I fell <laughs> down a lot. And uh, decided that was just the, <laughs> the end of it. I'm not. Real, I'm not really. Despite all my yeah. career choices and stuff, I'm really not all that coordinated. <laughs> That's no issue, as long as you tried. <laughs> I did. I did try. I did try at least. Uh, as I, I mentioned, that you were on season twenty of of Hell's Kitchen. You were the uh, what the first vegan on Hell's Kitchen. So how does how does that come about? Do you audition? Do does a headhunter from the show seek you out? How does I mean that's that's a big big deal. How, so how does that happen? Well, um, yeah, I. What's funny is like I did not seek out Hell's Kitchen. I think I did on accident. I wrote down on a list one time that I wanted to be roasted by Gordon Ramsay. That was like a year before Hell's Kitchen reached out to me. But I mean, living in LA, you end up networking with a lot of strange crowds. And so my boyfriend at the time, I had gone to a family friend's house of his and I cooked food there. And one of his family friends, girlfriends is Facebook friends with the casting director of Hell's Kitchen who made a Facebook post and said, hey, do you know any young chefs? If you do, tag them below, blah, blah, blah. And so all of a sudden I'm on Facebook 
and I'm on my break and I'm managing um, a vegan wholesale bakery here in LA. And all of a sudden I see like Tom McNally commented on Facebook, Amber Brill commented, Tom McNally commented, Amber Brill commented. And it's like noting, like notifying me that I'm tagged in all these comments. And so I right. click on it and they're having a conversation back and forth about like the food that I cooked and like, you should have her on the show. Next thing I know, Amber, the casting director is calling me through Facebook Messenger. <laughs> so she asked me, she's like, hey, I see that you're the vegan chef. I looked at your business page. Like it all just happened so fast. She's like, you did this, you did this. We think that's really cool. Do you want to cook meat on the show? And I, I, the first thing I said was no. I was like, no, I don't want to cook meat, but I appreciate the offer. And right. that was it. Like, hey, I hope it's not too late. I really regret my decision. Decision. Um, I, I want to be on the show on mainstream TV, and and um, the vegan community luckily was super supportive of me, even though I had to like cook meat and do the one thing that none of the vegans agree with. So, yeah, that's the story. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you catch any flack from? Uh, the vegan community uh, and your friends for, uh, you know, dealing and cooking meat? Um, can you hear the background uh, noise? A little bit. Really right. quickly. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm staying at a friend's house here in <laughs> LA and he's on the phone really loud. Um, So I actually, I did receive some negative comments from the vegan community in regards to my decision to cook meat on the show. However, like after talking to them, like anybody who came after me in the comments, um, I brought it into a private conversation. And after talking to them for like five minutes, they were super understanding because I think it's important that like um, anyone who's trying to make anybody change their lifestyle, like it's important for for them to understand that they're threatening their sense of security and everything that they know and love and that have been raised with. So, you know, you have to approach people with compassion and an open mind and, and an understanding. So, yeah, I think yeah. that being rigid is not necessarily the best way to convert people. <laughs> if that's what you're, if that's what someone's intention is, is. Tell me about the first time meeting chef Gordon Ramsay it was, was it super intimidating or did he, or is it off camera? He came across super nice or were you like, oh my gosh, uh, he's, he's going to be just like he is on TV and I'm going to freak out. Well, the thing is you don't really know what he's like off camera because you only see him in the chef setting. It's not like, it's not, you know, it's a reality TV show. So they've set it up. So that way there is no like off camera. You're always on camera. You're always recorded. So um, you just get the real deal. And what you get is a show in this platform to really mentor the next generation. Um, at least for my season, because it was season 20 Young Gun. Right. So, yeah, of course, he's an asshole in the kitchen, but it's not like he's being an asshole because he's an asshole. It's because he cares so much and he wants people to thrive and he has the skill set and he's passing it on. And it, even if you notice, like from season one to season 20 of Hell's Kitchen, he's very different now because his father has been doing this for many years and he's softened. So even him being more of like an aggressive, an aggressive personality it's still he's still pretty tame and right. i think that my generation like if you're not grown if you're not raised in an old school kitchen you're gonna take that personally no matter what but i was raised in an old school kitchen so i felt like i had an advantage because i'm used to like swearing and people throwing things when they're angry so that's kind of a mo is just dealing with a bunch of passionate people but right. yeah I mean, he's intense, but I wasn't intimidated by him because I looked up to him and I wanted to learn. I wanted him to kick me in the butt. Like, that's what I came there for. So I was like, all right, here I am. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, absolutely. Uh, and so, I mean, that's, that's what you're used to. And, and as you say, uh, you know, that, that old school, uh, old kitchen mentality, uh, cursing, throwing things, how, how did you have to, how much did you have to reel that in when you went to Saudi Arabia, uh, to, to work at, over there? That's a good question. And, um, um, I had really reeled it in after going vegan and like creating space to like be a better collaborator and a better human. But then when I got to Saudi Arabia, I was like, okay, we're opening a restaurant and I'm in a third world country and I need things to get done. And if they're not getting done, um, which they weren't because, and not to anybody's fault, but like, everyone in Saudi Arabia was busy, like busy. And so if you're opening a restaurant, their attention's not on you, that it's the attention is on the thousand things that they have to do that don't include you. But when you really need things done, because you've got opening day approaching, it's time to go. (laughs) So all of a sudden I like snapped back into old Josie pre-vegan. And I, that was like really interesting territory for me. Because I was like, is it okay to behave like this? I thought we grew from this, but then I realized, no, it's actually okay. Because sometimes you just need to be that way to get things done. <laughs> right. So and you were there it's a during Riyadh. Yeah, you were there during Riyadh season when you were there Yeah, you were there during Riyadh season, which is a huge, huge thing over there. Uh, did you like? Did you get to see the huge fireworks uh, displays or huge, you know, big? Uh, displays that they're that they were doing their demonstrations during that time yeah yeah i i didn't see their opening festival which was when they had thousands of drones go up displaying the king's face which i the director of catering you know toback he sent he took a video of it because he was there and he sent it to me and i was just like oh my gosh um because obviously i was in the kitchen but um yeah the the stuff that they were i mean it's an open ended budget for from the saudi government and pepsi was sponsoring it so it's like if they wanted something it was there like if you want justin bieber there okay get him there we're going to pay him a ton of money he's going to be there in like 3 days <laughs> you know what i mean so it's just like another level of uh hospitality that i had never been exposed to in my life that's i i i i couldn't imagine i'd like to imagine but i i just i I just couldn't uh i've seen it on tv and social media and uh, i couldn't just i couldn't imagine being there being there live now uh let's say let's say i was coming over and i'm not a vegan what would you what would you make me to help convince me to uh to to turn vegan okay let me ask ask you this do you prefer i'm sorry uh you were uh you broke up a little bit What, what was the question oh i said do you prefer beef chicken or pork more uh i would say chicken Yeah, definitely chicken. Okay. Well, then I would probably make you a fried chicken sandwich. Yeah. I'd probably make you a fried chicken sandwich out of like my taki or blue oyster mushrooms, a uh, citrusy sauce to go with it. And yeah, just like things that are really familiar, but crunchy and slightly healthier versions. I mean, deep fried mushrooms aren't like the healthiest thing, but it's a healthier alternative and it would give you all the nostalgia of something that you love do you uh do you find yourself doing that a lot for for friends who are unfamiliar with the vegan lifestyle but uh don't want to offend you and and they want to enjoy your company yeah actually all of my friends are vegan um but when it comes to my family i make them the staple that they always ask for when I come into town and visit is my deep dish vegan pizza. 
Uh, it's Chicago style. So it's something like super indulgent that doesn't even taste remotely vegan. And I usually I do uh, broccoli, like roasted in honey and garlic. And then I chop it up kind of fine. And, you know, you do like, I make my thick tomato sauce with San Marzano tomatoes from scratch. And I reduce it with a little bit of red wine and some thyme and rosemary. And then, you know, I make the vegan cheese and I layer that uh, in there too with the broccoli. And so then it all comes together and they're just like sick to their stomachs because they just ate half a pizza, which is like two pounds of food. So, <laughs> so all right, and then they're I'm hungry again. Right. And in 30 minutes and I'll yeah next time i'm in la i'm coming over for some uh for some vegan deep dish pizza then done you <laughs> let me know when you're in town i'll make sure the dough's fermented i'll make sure it's all lined up <laughs> <laughs> fantastic uh one thing i i want to talk about before we go to um before we go to our our, our mini game here uh i was reading something where uh, at one point before um, things turn for you, uh, turn for the better, that you were actually, uh, were you living out of your car? <laughs> yeah, there is an article online about that. Um, I was. Yeah, I, I was working for Tesla and I was like climbing the corporate ladder there and I kept getting promoted and then like, Tesla was going through some growing pains and like they kept having like these waves of layoffs and I kept not getting laid off. And I realized I was like pissed off about that. And I was like, why am I staying here if this is not what I want to do? And right. uh, I realized, oh, I'm only here so I can pay my expensive LA County rent. You know, what if I only had like, what would it look like to reduce my expenses as much as possible? And I was like, well, so then it, it became a joke where I was like, well, worst case scenario, I'll live in my truck. Worst case scenario, I'll live in my truck. And then I started Googling. It was like 2 a.m. on a Friday night. I remember I was drinking a glass of red wine and doing my laundry at a laundromat. I was exhausted. And, and then I started Googling videos of people who had lived in their F-150. And... I saw their builds and I was like, okay, this is cool. And so I sent a couple links to my uncle that lives in Huntington Beach, who's an engineer. I was like, do you think you could build this? And he's like, yeah, I would love to build that because he like builds cars and he's obsessed with van life. So he's kind of like living vicariously through me. And so one day I brought up the plans to him and he's like, okay, this is, these are all the measurements. He started like measuring out my truck. He sent me to Home Depot with a list cost me two grand in supplies. And then I bought like the $1,500 camper topper with windows and a carpeted ceiling. And next thing I knew, I was quitting my job at Tesla and I lived in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. And, and then now here you are uh, just Thanks, uh, a fun. month away from, uh, from watching Peeled go uh, live uh, on television. That's an incredible story. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's super fun. And it was also super scary. But I think that if there's anything that um, someone wants to do, and there's like, a ton of reasons as to why they can't do it, it takes sometimes like drastic action to accomplish it. But I mean, I'm just like a chick from Detroit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, sometimes, I think if you're just willing to look really stupid, um, because you do look really stupid when you're climbing out of your F-150 in the morning and like people are on the sidewalk and they're like, hi, like, what are you doing? You know, it's, <laughs> but like, that's the negative side effect, but the positive side effect is you free yourself up to, yeah, just do what you want to do and have free time to make it happen. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a great mentality. Great mentality. All right. So we're going to go into our, uh, uh, what I like to call the Milo Beasley show frequently asked questions. I'm going to ask you the same five questions that I ask to all my guests here on the Milo Beasley show. So are you ready? I'm hold on. Okay. Now I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> all right. There's no wrong answers. So, 
Well, theoretically. All right. Uh, question number one. What was the first concert you ever attended? <laughs> no. <laughs> My first concert that I ever attended was a Hillary Duff concert, and I was like 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, What's the next one? Hit me. <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you nobody has answered Hillary Duff on the show before. So you are the first. Of course. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <for> that. <laughs> All right. Question number two. Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah, I have conversations with them every day. What? Not really, but I mean, yeah, I believe in ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. You're you know, like, what? What, no, what kind of entity did I just invite onto my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a this is a whole different story now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, I mean, I guess you could start your we'll cooking that. show with ghost. I don't know how that would. I don't know how that would work, but. You know, we're willing to try anything here. We could have the ghosts prepare the meal, and I would just like facilitate that. I'd be their executive so, chef. They could prepare the meal, prove their perfect. existence to the rest of humanity. Yeah, done. <laughs> All right. Uh, in a in a twist to a common question, in a movie about your life, who would play your parents? Oh man, I think it would be my aunt and uncle that live in Portland, um, okay. ideally, because they're like super, they're like super hippie, progressive. Like, I just visited them recently, actually, because I did the Cisco event in Portland. But like, they're my parents, and they're super uh, wacky. Like, their personalities are. Like, my aunt came to dinner, and she had these uh, acupuncture needles in her head and she goes hi don't touch my head I just came from my acupuncturist like she's so my mother <laughs> in another life she is my mother <laughs> and my uncle is like six foot nine massive and like super grounded and really funny so yeah that would that'd be good tv <laughs> question number four who is your favorite person to follow on social media? People are trash. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, who is my favorite only, person to follow that, on social uh, media? They only follow like animals and certain dogs on, on social media. They're like, that's all I follow is, is animals. Yeah, no, I actually, most of my followers have like people that, I have conversations with on a weekly basis or they're like Michelin star chefs. So maybe we'll just give a shout out to Prince Khalid bin al Walid of KBW Ventures and he invests in vegan companies. So, and he's a really, he's a really good friend and great human. So I enjoy watching. I probably watch his stories the most cause they're always inspiring and uplifting. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. So, uh, so living that LA lifestyle and, or being on a, you know, a, a set of television show, um, have you had that, uh, what has been that one fanboy moment that you saw somebody, you saw either a celebrity or somebody who you admired that you absolutely fanboyed out that you either could not speak to them or, you had to go and get a picture or and you ran your, you know, motor mouth and you just wouldn't stop talking. Mm, it's Gordon Ramsay. Um, <laughs> I, there's actually footage on Hell's Kitchen Fox Instagram. They made an entire snippet, like a, a reel called Josie's Crush. And it just shows me like their editing team, like put the hard eyes in every time that I saw Gordon. And they did a slow-mo of me like lip licking my lips. And it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing, but it happened. It's real. I just look up to Gordon Ramsay. Okay. I'm not in love with him, but I'm like in love with him in a very professional way. 
might I add, <laughs> but yeah, it's Gordon all the way. That's that's fantastic. That's a great story. Um, so before we wrap up here, uh, for folks that do want to find you on social medias or find more information on on Peeled, where can they where can they go? Where can they follow you? Instagram, Vegan Chef Josie, and Twitter, Vegan Chef Josie, and TikTok, Vegan Chef Josie. It's all the same. So yeah, definitely hit me up if anyone is vegan curious or vegan or wants to do something inspiring in the vegan community, would love to connect. And I'm a big voice memo fan. So send me a voice memo and you'll win my heart forever. And I'll definitely reply with a voice memo. <laughs> Fantastic. And of course, peeledshow.com to get all the information on Peeled, including uh, where to, you know, how to get tickets for the, there's still time, tickets to the world premiere uh, red carpet and uh, hang out with uh, Josie and, and the other chefs and the other hosts from the show as well. Yeah, peelshow.com, VIP tickets. Would love to meet people in person. Let's have a glass of champagne. Let's have some more d'oeuvres. They're prepared, again, by the chefs that competed. There's going to be a lot of different vegan vendors. It's going to be an awesome time. That's fantastic. And so, uh, some vegan you, celebrities you, there, too. So if anybody wants to fangirl or fanboy. Uh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, any last words uh, either about the show or anything else before we wrap up? Um, I just want to thank you for your time. Uh, truly, this has been such a great interview. And I know that we had to try a few times to line up our schedules. And yeah, just appreciate the heck out of you. And thanks for having such a great personality and energy. And I hope to do this again soon. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll do this for season two. How about we do this for season two? Perfect. It's, it's a deal. Perfect. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for hanging out with me this evening. And thank you all for watching either at home, wherever you are on your phones, uh, on your computers, wherever you are. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. But most importantly, tell your friends. Thank you, Josie, so much. And uh, we'll see everybody next week.